He gave them the water of wisdom to drink. It will be made strong in them and will not be moved. It will raise them up forever. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. He gave them the water of wisdom to drink. It will be made strong in them and will not be moved. It will raise them up forever. Alleluia, alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So today we celebrate this Tuesday within the octave of Easter. We continue to celebrate Easter Day stretched over these eight days. So we ask the Lord to let this be a time of Easter joy. That we, um, as someone was saying uh, that I was listening to, to have flowers within our home, just like we have flowers within our, our faith home, to have joy on our hearts, in our on our lips, in our actions, because we are an Easter people. And it's important for us to remember that there are times to fast. There are the times to celebrate. This is one of these times of just great solemnity and joy. And it all goes back to that core truth that Jesus Christ passed through death and he rose victorious. And so there is nothing to fear because Jesus Christ is Lord. And that's good news that should make us be truly intoxicated with the Spirit, to have that true inebriation that Peter, in the first reading, as he proclaims this uh, Pentecost message in the Acts of the Apostles, we don't hear it in this part, but people start looking at Peter and the Apostles saying they've had too much wine to drink. And Jesus says, or and then Peter says, no, it's not that, but it's a different filling that brings a joy, that brings this, this, this deep, deep, um, joyful presence. And that's what we need to have within us. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God, May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, 
Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, you have bestowed on us paschal remedies. Endow your people with heavenly gifts, so that possessed of perfect freedom, they may rejoice in heaven over what gladdens them now on earth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. On the day of Pentecost, Peter said to the Jewish people, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is made to you and to your children and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them. Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. My soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us, who have put our hope in you. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus there, but did not know it was Jesus. 
Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? She thought it was the gardener and said to him, Sir, if you carried him away, tell me where you laid him, and I will take him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, Stop holding on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I am going to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and then reported what he had told her. The Gospel of the Lord. There's beautiful models of evangelization within these readings. In the first, we have Peter proclaiming the truth, and it says that the people were cut to the heart. And that's what our witness and what our words, what our preaching, what our actions should find those creative ways that are not first and foremost our power, our creative programs and things like that, but soaked with the Holy Spirit because he's the only one who's able to cut through the walls and defenses. You remember how the Word of God is called the Sword of the Spirit. And so Jesus Christ takes that Spirit, His Spirit, because He wants the Word to get through the defenses, so the Spirit is the one that breaks through. It cuts through and allows the Word to rest in the heart and to grow, to be planted but it has to get through the hard soil first. And so when we preach with our lives and with our words, when we share what God has done in our own lives, are we making sure that we pray to the Holy Spirit? Because if it's just us and our creativity of, hey, this is what God did, but we don't really take that moment to say, Holy Spirit, I'm nothing without you even if I have the most amazing words, but if I don't have your love working through me, then I'm just a gong, just a clanging symbol. And so Peter, soaked with the Spirit, proclaims these words. And he says, the whole house of Israel, he's speaking to all the people of Israel gathered for this feast of Pentecost, gathered from all over the civilized worlds, the, the image of the tribes coming back to Jerusalem. I rejoiced when I heard them say, let us go to the house of the Lord, let us go to Jerusalem. That's one of the, one of the psalms, and they're coming for this. It's a pilgrimage festival psalm, and they're coming for this feast of Pentecost, which is the feast of the harvest. And remember what Jesus said in the Gospel of John, up and see, the harvest is ripe. And so Peter proclaims this, and he says, let everyone here know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ. God, Kyrios, Lord, and Christ, the Messiah, the one promised to us. And the amazing thing about God's plan is he put both of them together. A lot of times in the Old Testament we talk about, well, there's the Lord, and then there's his servant, the Messiah. But here, they're the same. And that same mysterious Lord Messiah says, this is Jesus, and you crucified him. Do you see the courage where before he was afraid of a serving girl, and he said, I don't even know who this person is, and now he's speaking out to the whole house of Israel, saying, Guys, you crucified him. He's putting himself in the midst of that as well, but he's saying, like, this is what happened. That God raised him from the dead. 
And that's why everything that this man said about him is true, because God vindicated him. God's righteousness is his vindicating, him putting the stamp of approval. And if Jesus was this liar, this lunatic, well, then he would just be cast aside because being put on the cross was a sign in the old covenant as this person's cursed. This person is someone God is rejecting because he's falling into the hands of the enemy. But because he rose, he broke out of the tomb. Everything that he said is true. And he said that he and the Father are one. So the people are hearing this. They're saying, what? It says they're cut to the heart. What are we to do, my brothers, is what they say. And Peter says to them, repent and be baptized. In the name of Jesus, repent of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that what we do in baptism? Do you reject Satan? I do. All his works and all his empty show. Do you believe in God? Do you believe in our Lord Jesus Christ? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? So this is what we need to see within our lives, and this is also evangelization, is we have to repent. We have to cut out the stuff that's crowding in our heart to make room for the one who our heart is longing for. We have to stop eating the appetizers and filling up on all the Ritz crackers in order to have the wonderful lamb feast and to be able to enjoy that. And part of the new evangelization is finding creative ways of helping people to see that why should they spend their money on what does not satisfy? That's from Isaiah. Versus come to the water. All you who are thirsty, it's, it's helping people to discover that they're actually thirsting for something else. Every disordered desire that all of mankind has, there's a holy desire behind that. A holy thirst that just is trying to drink something that's not going to satisfy. Trying to drink salt water. Saying, I see, this, I see this ocean right here, and this is not making me any better. In fact, it's actually killing me. And yet, we keep drinking and keep drinking of the salt water. Because it's water, and yet we, if we were just given fresh water, we would know the difference. But maybe our stomach is so accustomed to salt water that at first, maybe we take a little tiny sip and then we kind of pull back being like, this is not what I want. I'm comfortable with this. I've always had salt water. And yet the Lord is saying, this is what will satisfy. Let go of the Ritz crackers. Wait for the feast. That's the promise of this Pentecost experience, which is, interestingly enough, this is what we're learning about right after Easter Sunday. Because all of Easter season is getting ready for the great feast of Pentecost, the great harvest. So a note from the Gospel today. St. John is always doing things that are full of irony. He's always speaking on many different levels. And you see this in blindness, in the light, in Nicodemus saying, how can a child be born in their mother's womb again? It's born again, born above. But here, you have Mary Magdalene encountering Jesus for the first time after the resurrection, and she thought it was the gardener. So in, some, in one way, she's wrong, it's Jesus. But she's actually more right than she realizes. 
because God is the original gardener. In the beginning, he planted the garden. He formed man out of the ground, breathed life into him. And his whole joy of God is to make things grow, to bring new life. And he gave that role to Adam in the garden, to keep and guard the garden, to be the gardener which in Hebrew is actually the same word for taking care of the temple. And so the Garden of Eden became the paradise that then you would see all of those symbols from Eden go into the temple of Jerusalem. So if you were to walk into the temple, Solomon's temple, you would actually see all of these different things that would remind you of Eden because the temple was always trying to get back to Eden, the place where we walked with God in friendship. And now that temple is destroyed, but there's another temple that's been brought up, the very body of Christ. And so God doesn't bring us back to Eden, he brings us back to paradise, what Eden was pointing towards. And he's the great gardener of our souls. And you see in this dialogue, taking Mary Magdalene, who can't see Jesus because her eyes are full of tears. And he's able to wipe those tears away with his voice. Mary. The Lord wants to speak our name to us. The name that he calls us by. And the way that he calls us by. Just like someone that we love they might have either a nickname or just the way that they call us. And there's something that just brings life within us. And that's what, Mary, that's what Jesus wants to do as he did with Mary. To open our eyes by letting us hear the way that we are called by him. Remember in Isaiah? I called you by name. I love you and you are mine. So as we continue in every celebration of the Mass, ask the Lord to show you through the Holy Spirit, again going back to the sword of the Spirit that wants to cut through the doubts, the ways that you've been called in different ways, not by the one who loves you and the one who is your divine bridegroom, but the enemy, who is the father of lies, who circles us with a web of lies. But in Isaiah 25, it says, That Lord will cast away, and in fact, he will swallow up that web of lies. He will swallow up death forever. And so let's ask the Holy Spirit to open our hearts to allow the web that's crept in in different ways, that keeps us from truly trusting the Father's love. Let's ask that through the Holy Spirit and in Jesus Christ, we might hear how we are called. Our eyes might be cleared of tears and we might be able to see God face to face. As we seek to follow Christ to fullness of life, we turn to him with our prayers and petitions. For Pope Francis and all church leaders, may the Spirit continue to help them grow in faithfulness and holiness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. For leaders of governments and nations, may God look graciously upon them in their service to their people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. For those who weep, may Jesus bring them consolation and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community and faith, may Easter joy and hope bring us ever closer to the Father who loves us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, mark with a sign of faith 
May the Lord of perfect love welcome them into his presence. I especially pray for the reflection soul of Charles Ramsden, for whom I've been asked to offer this Mass. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for the intention of Pope Francis for this month. We pray for those who risk their lives while fighting for fundamental rights under dictatorships, authoritarian regimes, and even democracies in crisis. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all the intentions that are within Our Lady's intercessory prayer box, for all the intentions given to us online and those that are within our hearts. We pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. God our Father, we know that you hear our prayers. We ask that you answer them according to your will. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice is yours. May be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May you all receive the sacrifice of your hands, for the grace and glory of His name, for our good and all our people. Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal. In Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, that on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, sending down our spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, 
and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify him through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through whom and with him and in him be, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, for Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirits. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. On this day, we told his
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. have risen with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Mind the things that are above. Alleluia, alleluia. Hear us, Almighty God, and as you have bestowed on your family the perfect grace of baptism, so prepare their hearts for the reward of eternal happiness in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a reminder that we have our divine. 
Divine Mercy Novena tonight at 6.30 here in the church. Um, and also on Thursday, since this week we don't have, we don't have our school masses, um, Thursday is a regular parishioner mass. Um, so this is a beautiful time to be able to come, especially for anyone watching right now. This is a wonderful, wonderful um, uh, week in order to come and see the church in splendor, to see the, the, the smell, the fragrance of the flowers. Um, so I invite you to maybe to try to come at least one time if you're able to during this octave for daily mass, uh, just to be, to be able to experience this Easter joy. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thank you, God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in God, be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May thou be given a holy prayer, and do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, Proud about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.